You know, one of the things we always try to stress to people that are learning Media Composer is the importance of getting to know the keyboard. Knowing all the shortcuts and the ins and outs of the keyboard brings such a greater degree of control over the application than just using the mouse to click around. But there are still going to be times when even the keyboard can't replace the presence of a dedicated control surface. Now on Media Composer 5.5, we're introducing the new Artist series of controllers. Artist Transport, Artist Mix, and Artist Control. These are three Ethernet-based control surfaces that really raise the level of interaction between you and Media Composer. Let's start by taking a look at Transport. Transport is made up of a jog and shuttle wheel, seven programmable function keys, six programmable soft keys, as well as a numeric keypad. So you can see that as I move the jog wheel, Media Composer responds very tightly to just what I'm doing here with the uh, control surface. It's always nice to have a jog wheel when you have a spinning triangle in the background of your shot. Shuttle wheel also moves so play, uh, in accordance to however far I move the wheel, it's going to move that much faster or slower. The function keys themselves are already mapped so that I can play, Great. stop, go in reverse, jump to previous and next edits, as well as do ins and outs. The soft keys, as I mentioned, are programmable. The way I program transport is by bringing up the Yukon control settings. So you can see there's my jog wheel, my shuttle, my seven function keys, which all can be changed. I'm going to leave those set to the default. Next, I'm going to move to the soft keys themselves. Right now, those are set to different uh, functions from Media Composer. So I have jog, shuttle, splice in, overwrite, go to start, and undo. Again, you can change those however you like, but I'm going to leave those just how they are. Last one would be the numpad. Now this is pretty uh, straightforward in how it works. Primarily I'd use it to jump around uh, via time code within the clip. So if I want to jump to say this frame right here, just enter in the time code and I'm there. But it can also do a lot more than that. I can use it to uh, map different tools and functions from Media Composer. So I'm going to go back to the Yukon control settings. In this case, what I want to do is I want to take uh, the one key and I want to program the audio tool for that. So the way I'm going to do that is to zoom in a little closer here. And I'm going to add um, a regular key. In this case, it would be uh, Command 1, which is the shortcut for the audio tool. I'll go ahead and I'll call this audio tool. Save that and step back out. So now when I press the one key on the numpad, it's going to bring up the audio tool which is hiding on me somewhere. There it is. Now it's not just shortcuts that I can do. I can also use basic functionality from Media Composer. So let's go back to Yukon control settings. This time I'm going to take the uh, two button. And rather than using a shortcut, I'm going to use the Yukon settings to go to commands. And you can see all the different uh, menu items you might find in Media Composer move, play, edit, trim, and so on, as well as smart tools. And I'm going to go to tools, and there's my audio mixer. Set that. It's already going to drop the name in there for me. I'll save that. And when I step back out, when I press the 2 button, it's going to bring up the audio mixer for me. Now this is really convenient because now what I want to do is I want to move on to Artist Mix. Mix gives you eight touch sensitive flying faders for controlling your audio. Um, you can see that it's, it's uh, all very responsive. So as soon as I jump to the timeline, it knows what my audio settings already are for the timeline. See that it's already got audio one through seven there. I can adjust these. Let me bring up my mixer for you. And find a clip. Okay, see it on track two. So I move that up and down. Let's zoom in a little more so you can see that better. Okay, so as I adjust uh, via artist mix, with the fader on the control surface, it's making those changes to that track. Also, I have these eight rotary encoder knobs at the top that are going to allow me to adjust 
the pan as well. Of course, if I want to reset it, I just press down on the key and it'll reset back to the midpoint. Same thing with adjusting the soloing and muting. So I have all my buttons necessary for soloing a clip or muting a clip, or track, I should say. Now, you might have a project where you have more than eight tracks in your timeline, and that's fine, because what you can do is you can use the nudge and bank keys to step through the different tracks. So you can see I'm now jumping ahead to tracks 9, 10, and 11 that wouldn't have shown up on my basic layout. Same thing with bank. Bank moves four at a time. So now I'm tracks A1 through 7, jump ahead, and it's adding an additional four tracks to my artist mix. The third control surface is artist control. Now this is sort of a, a combination of many different uh, types of controllers. So you can see that on the left hand side I have four flying faders just like I would have had with artist mix. Same thing with adjusting the levels, uh, the soloing and muting. I also have a little mini uh, shuttle wheel here as well as um, play uh, transport buttons for controlling the playback of my clips and sequences. Not as, uh, as rugged or as full featured as transport, but you know a nice little controller that's going to allow you to jog through your timeline. The really important part, the really heart of it, is this touch sensitive screen right here in the middle. And this offers you the greatest uh, degree of uh, mappability, functionality, whatever you want to call it. By default, it's uh, set up on my track. So I can actually control uh, enabling and disabling of tracks right from the touch screen here. You can see as I change different tracks, um, they light up or turn off in the timeline. I also have a soft keys button that's going to bring up um, different pages of functionality that I've added. So I can pretty much take any um, tool um, function that I want from Media Composer and map it in a configuration that makes sense to me right from within artist control. Below the uh, LCD monitor, I have 12 different mappable soft keys. Again, we have those uh, rotary encoders on the side for our doing more incremental adjustments to, to certain functions that you might bring up inside Media Composer. Now the beauty of this uh, being an uh, Ethernet setup is that I can control not just one machine, Matter of fact, if I go over here to Surfaces, inside my control settings, you can see the different controllers. You can see there's also a tab for workstations. This means that because these are Ethernet based, I can control any workstation on my network. The nice thing about this is that these control surfaces are not just supported by Media Composer, but as well as uh, third party applications like um, Final Cut Pro or Logic, um, or of course uh, Avid's own Pro Tools. So I could have these set up in, in one room and have different workstations in another room that I'm switching back and forth and controlling those applications. The other nice part about this being an Ethernet setup is that each control service is aware of the other. So you might have noticed or heard as I was jumping around in, in the different tracks with Mix, it was making changes to the faders that are available in artist control as well. So these are actually being used in tandem. So I've actually expanded out to having 12 different flying faders to control my audio. So whether you want just you know, one of the single uh, control surfaces, whether it's jog and shuttle via artist transport, audio work via artist mix, or a hybrid of all the above, and really the ultimate in mapping and controlling your application and controlling Media Composer, the Artist Series is a really great way of elevating uh, your degree of interactivity with Media Composer. Mm -hmm.